Hi guys, in today's video I'm doing a really exciting one. I'm going to be unboxing my first niche fragrance. I did buy a Montel for the first time the other week, so I guess that counts. I don't know, is Montel into your niche? What is the distinction? Someone let me know. But I think Montel is a niche, so this is technically my second one, but this is far more expensive and far more exciting for me, so anyways. And then I will be sampling more niche fragrances for the fourth time. So at this point, this is kind of a regular thing that I do. I will have a fifth one. I already have more samples on the way. Yeah, if you guys want to get into that, then let's get started. Uh, as you can tell by the title, I got from the House of Oud, What About Pop? So I did sample this before buying. So perfect example of a sample gone right. And I believe I showed this in my third sampling niche fragrances video where I did the four House of Ouds. This was my favorite one out of the four that I sampled, and it was a love at first sniff. So I thought it pushes out. Okay, it does. Actually, quite tough. I don't want to mess it up, but you need to apply some pressure. This is so hard to get out. Can I rip this apart? Like, I don't really need this, right? I ripped it. Sorry. I'm a very impatient person. Okay, you guys, it looks like this, and this is exactly what I expect from a niche house. Uh, again, this is my first real niche fragrance. My Montel one just came in a cute little pouch. This is definitely luxe. And again, it's also double the price. Oh my god, you guys, hold on. You're kidding. Okay, guys, I'm back. That was a lot. Okay, I'm gonna read this thing really quick. This piece is a jewel of artistry. Its craftsmanship makes every piece unique. No two are alike. Any minor imperfections on the surface of the bottle are evidence of the work of the Italian craftsman who decorated this masterpiece of style. So that's what I heard, that every bottle is painted differently. Oh my gosh, you guys. Not there being a scratch. Again, it says any imperfections could be blah, 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 blah. So, wow, okay, it looks like this, and I knew that this is how the egg really looks like. The first time I saw it from the side, I was like, what is that, seriously? But, see, there are little black specks, which could just be imperfections, but to me, it just kind of looks just, like, ugly. It should not look like that. But it has a golden bottom, and it just looks like an egg. And that's how it looks from the side. I mean, if it was truly spherical, it would be way too much perfume, I think, and just kind of not feasible. So I think you pull it apart like this, yes, and this is how it is. Okay, I was wondering how this looked because people don't really show it without the cap too often. And I already know how this smells. I don't know if I want to make it my scent of the day quite yet because I do want to sample all these new fragrances. But I will spray it on a tester strip just to remind myself. And it is quite lightweight, to be honest. Oh my god. You guys, it's amazing. I just saw, oh my god, you guys, I'm terrible at remembering fragrance reviewers' usernames because I feel like they always have something very unique. Oh my god. I think it was casually scented or casually scents. Put this in his top 10, I think it was niche fragrances. And I was like, oh my god, because he mainly discusses men's fragrance, but this, I, this is probably unisex, but I'm just saying, like, the fact that this made it into his top 10, I just found that so interesting because there's so many great men's fragrances he could have picked so many great like women's unisex fragrances and this made it in guys this is okay can i be honest i have to say something really quick that some people may think that this smells a little bit like urine and not like cat urine not like a this is gonna sound so bad i don't know how to explain it other than like popcorn and the butteriness can kind of lean that way if you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know where to go from there it doesn't smell like urine you guys but People who are really sensitive to popcorn scents may think that way, but to me, this is a masterpiece. It's buttery popcorn. It's the caramel. It has those florals. It has musk. It has a depth to it with an ebony note. Um, I forgot. There's just so much nuance to this, and you will not find a fragrance like this for an affordable price. You will not find a fragrance like this at a designer price. I think this is something only... I don't know, I haven't smelled every fragrance in the world, but first of all, popcorn is an extremely unique note in fragrance in general. Uh, so if you are looking for a quality popcorn fragrance, definitely try sampling this one. I have tried Pure Excess from Paco Rabanne and did not like that one. First of all, the popcorn note was like a kettle corn very quickly in the beginning and then it left as soon as it came. That fragrance is more of like generic, sweet, ylang-ylang type of fragrance. 
this has white florals and like I said the caramel I think some whipped cream in there buttered true popcorn this is amazing highly 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 recommend I'm so glad to have it and I will treasure it forever okay I'm even more excited for the samples because I love sampling and hopefully one of these will be my next niche purchase so yeah without further ado let's just say that you get four free samples with your lucky scent order sorry if you get a full bottle of course so i'm just kind of gonna go in order of least exciting to most exciting that makes sense to me so first i'm starting off with bdk parfums grish charnel grish charnel sorry grish charnel so this is probably unlike most of the other fragrances in here it's supposed to be woody and spicy it has cardamom black tea iris which this could be a total mess this could be totally not my vibe but it could also be my vibe because it has fig and vetiver and sandalwood and tonka bean so we'll see we'll see i want to get into fig fragrances i also was intrigued by the tea note and i love tonka bean so we'll see what's most prominent in here this has been described as masculine of course that's what i always hear about it spicy just not what a lot of people expected this is actually really really nice but definitely not my type of fragrance guys i should have known but let me say i don't i have nothing against masculine fragrances this is a unisex scent supposedly like i love jazz club by mason margiela i love the smell of cologne in general like i love it this smells good by the way it's not too spicy or too woody. It smells great, but the fig is not, you know, the fig and the tonka bean, which is kind of what I wanted to be the main focus with the other stuff assisting, is not. Those notes are in the background, as you might expect, and it is mostly the woody spice. Just, this is really nice. I would love to smell it on a man. A lot of people have said, yeah, this is quite masculine, and I have to agree, but this is not a bad scent. I'm not offended by it, and I think... Just because it's masculine doesn't mean women can't wear it. It's just like, I would personally not wear this. Let's go to... I don't know where to go next. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll just do the other BDK. This is Rouge Smoking, and I heard so much about this from Amanda Coco Cabana, so shout out to her. I feel like I always have to try her recommendations. This is polarizing on Fragrantica. A lot of people, a lot of people said it smells like cherry cola. And I think Amanda said that too which I feel like I wouldn't have any qualms against that, but yeah, they're right. But this is also very, I don't know why anybody hasn't talked about this, maybe they have. This is very reminiscent of Mucolat by Montel. Like very, just a little bit better and less synthetic. Ooh, someone said it smells like love don't be shy and I get that. It has like 23 th thumbs down and 12 thumbs up, but I, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up right now to make it 13 because it does kind of smell like love don't be shy okay so at first it immediately smelled like cherry cola to me so i agreed with that but it doesn't anymore as it dries down in fact i don't even think the cherry like it's obviously there i think it's very much love don't be shy with just an added cherry note it's not a sour cherry it's like powdery cherry as stated in the main accords they both have pink pepper and bergamot uh they also share the orange blossom Love Don't Be Shy has iris. This one has heliotrope. They both have vanilla and labdanum. And I'm not very familiar with labdanum, but I did hear it's a leathery note. And I think, I think I smell that in both of them. It just makes it kind of deep and sexy, but I'm not like a fan, to be honest, of whatever undertone they both have. I don't know. I told you guys in one of my previous videos, I think I sampled Love Don't Be Shy in my first or second testing niche fragrances video, and I was not quite a fan, to be honest, and I am not a fan of this one either. It's not much different. If you have one, you do not need the other. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to Amouage. So we're just going to do each brand at a time. So I'll start off with Lilac Love. I have a feeling I won't like this, not to start it off negatively, but it is just heavy on the florals. And depending on how it's balanced, I don't like when it's just solely florals, but we shall see. So it's a gorgeous purple bottle. I think that these are all from the Secret Gardens collection, I think. And I also want to try Sunshine. Spoiler alert, I don't have Sunshine here with me, but I want to smell that one. Oof, okay. Looking at the notes, it's just like this could go one of two ways. All right, you guys, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there and say... This is an elderly woman 
fragrance. But it smells so good, but just like, it's definitely that vibe. And I don't know if I just associate lots of florals, like a powdery floral with elderly women. There's nothing wrong with powdery florals. I love certain, certain flowers with a powdery note, like an almond note, but okay. We have heliotrope, lilac, gardenia, peony, jasmine, rose, like boom. Like this is floral overload. Dude, this literally smells like someone's abuela, like not in a mean way, just literally. I don't know if patchouli is a main accord on Fragrantica, but it's definitely patchouli heavy to me. I don't know if I hate that because I don't want to be influenced by, you know, looking at the notes, but you do kind of get a cacao. And when they say cacao, they mean cacao. It's not milky chocolate or whatever. It's like dried, bitter chocolate. But to me, that is not the emphasis, or maybe it is when it later dries down. But I'm just talking about for now, this is blast of florals with cacao powder and patchouli. Yeah, you guys, that's not for me, uh, especially with the price of a mouage. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that because I think it's $370 per bottle. So anyway, moving on to Love Two Bros. I don't know if I'm gonna find this to be worth the money since again, it's a $400 bottle and it's just Two Bros and whipped cream, not just, but it's mainly a sweet tubero scent, which I feel like you can get anywhere. So yeah, tubero said, hello. I'm getting this vibe from a mouage fragrances that they're not for me. This is so far, I have one more mouage to smell. This is the rich Abuela brand. And I think Sally Marion was saying in her video that she has a respect for the brand, but that, what did she say? Oh my God, I'm forgetting. She said it's, it might be too sophisticated for her. Like she might not be the one to, the one who's worthy to wear these fragrances. And I have to agree. So no disrespect, but just like, this is like, if you're one of those people who has a lot of money and wants to smell very classy and you don't want because some designer fragrances overdo it with the sweetness. I love that. But like, you don't want amber, you don't want caramel in your fragrances. You don't want these syrupy notes. You just want a classy floral that's really well done and high quality. This is the way to go. But this for me, at first it was a blast of bubblegum tuberose and it also has gardenia and jasmine. I feel like you can definitely get those. Just a lot of heavy white florals. There is whipped cream and vanilla, but don't get it twisted. This isn't a super sweet fragrance. It's sweeter than your just average floral perfume because it has those notes, but it's not sweet. The bubblegum tube rose is almost giving me like a sunscreen vibe. I feel like I always say things smell like sunscreen. I don't think people agree. That might be the jasmine actually, because when a jasmine is too intense, like Alien by Mugler, it tends to pull a little sunscreeny to me or just overpowering. This is, again, it's not my type of fragrance. We're going to move on to Blossom Love, and I'm hoping I like this one because this is originally the only amouage I wanted to sample, but I decided to try the other two. Let's smell this one. So I like this one the most out of the three. It's also the sweetest of the three, but we'll see. Let me wave it around for a sec. I kind of like this one. I would not pay $400 for it. If this was even $200, I still wouldn't pay for it because this to me is not love at first sniff. I'm not thinking to myself that this is groundbreaking that I need in my collection now. So I would just base where my budget is right now. This is not worth it to me. Amouage definitely has a thing going. Like I said, rich, abuela. And even though I said that, we'll throw in Thea as well because this could easily be just someone who has money, like someone who has money and they look good and they wear a designer. Like it's not, again, this might be obvious because it's a niche expensive perfume. You're not going to smell any random person wearing this. Like this is somebody who owns several designer bags, who wears Louboutins to the mall type of thing. So it has heliotrope in the opening and bergamot. It has middle notes of amaretto, cherry blossom, ylang-ylang, rose, base notes of tonka bean, vanilla, suede, and amber. So again, these amouage fragrances all have a sophistication to them, which I associate sophistication with powdery, elegant florals, but I immediately smelled that amaretto. Just a little bit boozy, a little bit cherry. The rose and the heliotrope. I like the rose in here. 
I wish the heliotrope was not here. Honestly, that's just my preference, but I understand, you know, that's us making this sophisticated and still age appropriate for the people who can likely afford this. Because in my head, I associate money with older age, not in a bad way. I think it's just kind of obvious, you know, when you first start your career, you're not gonna be making as much as you would in 20 years. And so at that point, that's when you would be comfortable, you know, splurging on these types of fragrances. I'm just not there yet. I also am not keen on the powdery scents. Again, it's the best one out of the three to me. Guys, I can't, like if I'm being completely honest, I don't like these. Like if I smell them, I can appreciate them, especially Blossom Love. I'm like, mmm, definitely that Amaretto or the Cherry Blossom. Mm. It's good, but then, but then it's not. And that's just my preference for fragrance. Like if I were to make a fragrance, that's definitely not the direction I would go. I think they overdid it on the florals, but I know some people would think, I love it. I want the florals to be the main focus and everything else to be in the background. And that's definitely what you get with homage. So I'm not bougie enough to wear their fragrances. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. I'm just telling you guys, that's my opinion. So we're moving on to Zerzhov, which I've never tried before. And they are supposedly really good at gourmands. So I am thinking that this could be a hit. Let's see if we'll end out with a bang. So the ever popular Lyra. So I heard some things that this kind of smells like a sweet pastry in Paris by Zara, which I'm hoping it does not. And I've also heard that it's just kind of, if it doesn't smell like that, it's just similar. It's kind of like a lemon tart smell. I'm hoping it's a little bit more unique than that considering it's a niche brand. So we shall see. Y'all, okay, it kind of does smell like a sweet pastry in Paris if we're being honest. Have y'all ever smelled that one? Okay. So it opens with blood orange and bergamot and lavender. I can see the lavender, it's a soothing. It's citrusy, but a little bit soothing. Middle notes of cinnamon, licorice, jasmine, and base notes of caramel, vanilla, and musk. Guys, this smells like a sweet pastry in Paris. Maybe a little bit more sophisticated because a sweet pastry in Paris does kind of have a lemon cleaner note to it, to be honest. All I'll say about this is that I decluttered a sweet pastry in Paris, so. Honestly, they may not be 100% dupes, but if you want a similar vibe for a third of the price, check out that fragrance. It's discontinued, but it's always on Mercari. Somebody's always selling it. Okay, so let's go on to Cruz del Sur 2. And this, I'm hoping I love this one. This should end us with a bang, right? I don't see how it could go wrong. Guys, what is this? Like, seriously, I, I feel upset. I feel a little bit upset. I feel a little bit betrayed. Guys, I have to be honest, this is, I'm not one of those people who's so dramatic and like, ew, to a fragrance or to a smell. There, is there a lingy lay in here? There's something dirty in here. Okay, let's get into it. Mango, guava, pineapple, apple blossom. Maybe it's the guava, I don't know. Maybe I'm not familiar with how guava smell. I thought it was just a simple tropical smell. I, th I think I know what guava smells like. It's just the way it smells in here. I think it is the guava. Maybe I just don't like the smell of guava, but it's really turning me off. It has exotic floral notes, black currant, violet leaf. Maybe it's the leaf. Ozonic cucumber-like fragrance. Let's get into that. Because I don't feel like people talk about the, the cucumber violet leaf scent but it's something like that that's kind of throwing it off and it has base notes of milk dried fruits musk vetiver and cedar so i hate coming on here and saying bad things about fragrances because i know at least one person in the world likes each of these fragrances and especially some of them have a little cult following and i've seen people that i follow review them and say it's their staples so i hate coming on here and talking negatively about anything that anybody likes ultimately that's just how life works but this was my expectation a creamy mango smoothie that's what i heard it was gonna be the milk the mango obviously we have all these other notes but people kind of simplified it considering i got five of them for free and i only paid for two samples you know i'm good with that but this was so disappointing so 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 disappointing but I could just be overly critical I know there will be some people who are niche fanatics and think that I don't have the nose for it and that you know I I smell or I like celebrity perfume so that's why I don't like niche fragrances I you could say that I also just think some of the notes at least with homage the heavy florals and the powderiness are just something that 
I personally have never liked and maybe I will in the future but I just I didn't realize it was gonna be like that before trying that's why you sample and then Zerjoff, I don't know I thought those were both gonna be hits for me and they were just very odd I honestly think it just came down to the odd guava note in Cruz del Sur 2 and then Lyra just smells like the Zara perfume which I liked and I owned at one point but anyway I need to perhaps test some of these and see how the true dry down on my skin goes because I always said I have had fragrances that I hated when I smell on a tester strip but when I wore them my complete opinion changed and I always say that so I don't know I think that was it thank you guys so much for watching and please don't take any offense if I said something bad about your favorite fragrance people talk crap about the perfumes I love all the time literally because they call them basic and overdone and all this stuff so you know I guess it was my turn to just kind of share my opinion. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.